In my career, we've definitely tackled many, many problems. The one that feels really top of mind right now is uh, working for Weight Watchers. We're a part of a pretty significant transformation, uh, so we want to very rapidly be able to drive a future membership model that really encompasses both behavioral health and clinical health, and we want to be able to do that really quickly to pivot for our members. As a part of this work, we're a part of a global team. We're globally distributed across many countries, and being able to move with speed was something that we recognized at the Director Plus level was going to be increasingly important. So some of the work that we did to really address this problem was to really think about um, ways that we can improve uh, speed and collaboration. So with speed and collaboration, one of the challenges that we found is that we're working in different time zones, but we have to still move with speed. So the thing that really came to mind after doing quite a bit of conversation uh, with the team to try to unpack some of those issues was that we didn't really have a helpful forum where we could all be together hearing the same strategy at the same time with cross-functional intersections so that we could talk through what our opportunities were. So this was a pretty big problem that we had to figure out how to solve. In order to address the problem, we wanted to try to unpack a few things. First of all, what were any anti-goals? So what we wanted to first recognize is that we were very intentional about building a work from wherever model, meaning that um, we wanted to maintain a model where we could maintain a distributed workforce being able to get things done, but we still needed to improve speed and collaboration. So with that clarity, we thought, okay, what are some of the steps that we could do to really drive helpful collaboration? One of the things that we heard loud and clear from our feedback was that the importance of in real life collaboration was one of the things that when you kind of got that moment and you were all together, we all got to hear the same message at the same time. We got to really think about how we can um, talk through any issues, blockers, challenges, and that we could use that, that time to really take that back to our work to enable speed. And you have to imagine this is also happening post-COVID. So not only do you have new employees, but you have folks who've never met each other, and the only time they see each other is on a Zoom square. So some of the work that we did to really address this was to say, hey, what would it look like if we flipped the model and we actually decided, um, could we create in-person, in real life collaboration moments throughout the year that gave us that opportunity for speed and collaboration? So some of the things that we had to think about with that I'm sure the number one thing that's on your mind, as was on our minds, was how do you afford something like that? Like that was a pretty significant cost. And so we started to go down a conversation path with our chief financial officer, as well as the rest of our management team that said, hey, if this is something that we think is going to be um, an enabler for us to move fast, especially in this season where we're trying to move faster, what would a model look like? So our chief financial officer was pretty clear of whatever the model looks like, there isn't incremental money to solve for it. And so that was useful because I think in our business context, it's not like we have a magic wand that makes these things happen. So it ended up opening up some conversations with our leadership team where we just got honest about that. And we said, how might we look at our t and &E model differently if we feel like an investment like this is the right thing to do? So we looked at a few models and we, what we landed on was that a quarterly in-person gathering would be worth it, but it would only be worth it if 100% of our director plus population was able to participate. So what we did is asked our leadership team members to say, hey, would you be willing to carve out some of your T&E so that we could say 100% of the time we could bring our teams together. And on our job, one of the things that we had to be responsible for was building out what would we do at this time? How would we know that it's successful? How would we know that we'd be achieving these goals? And helping our leadership team think about how they would spend their t and &E differently. So after a lot of back and forth and conversation, we got that agreement and we were able to move forward with a quarterly solution that we call Peak Weeks, where we bring our director plus population into New York for a high impact week of collaboration and problem solving. And so far, the results have been incredibly positive. So we've now had a couple of quarters of doing the peak weeks where we've brought 
150 director plus from all over the world to our New York office for a high impact week of collaboration. Two things we were looking at. One, did we get 100% of our team? In both instances, we averaged between 90 to 100% of the team in New York participating. We also looked at the effectiveness of the programming that we offered. So in both instances, we had peak programming, which were sort of mandatory moments where we brought the entire team together, sitting in the same space at the same time, hearing the same message. Um, the feedback that we've heard from this has been between 85 to 90 percent people scored it a four or a five out of five in terms of effectiveness. We also looked at other metrics like um, were you able to do things like meet a colleague that you hadn't met before? Um, were you able to collaborate and actually get things done? Here's where the scores even got higher and that people felt like they were able to get even more work done that was able to, that was able to help them speed up their, their process or work through a conflict or work through an issue that was coming to bear that was sort of dragging and stalling. Last week, we actually had um, a peak where we, where we were able to go deeper into our strategy, the state of finance, we were able to bring in a Harvard professor, and we were able to do enablement. And those scores were even higher than the first one. So what we're finding is that people are finding a tremendous amount of value in making the investment, and that we actually are finding that they are giving us examples of how they're utilizing the time, which I think is even really Really, um, even more indicative that the investment is worth it and we're giving people both the space and the facilities to kind of work and the agency to be able to work through dilemmas that will make us move a little bit faster so overall satisfaction is high investment is high and people are definitely excited about us continuing to make this type of investment and we're excited to see how that's going to help enable um, our speed and effectiveness in getting things done